Hi guys, hi there. Um, so sorry, I'm having technical difficulties trying to figure out how this live session works, but um, hi everyone. Um, this is Aisha Chidole. I am an immigration and intellectual property attorney here in Orlando, Florida. And um, the title of my live show is called Lipsticks and Trademark. And I'm sure most of you are wondering why is it called Lipsticks and Trademark? Um, I call it that because, you know, every time I have on lipstick on any of my videos, I always get DMs or people wanting to know what I'm wearing. And so, um, I decided to combine what I love to wear with what I love to do, which is to talk about trademarks and how you as a business can protect your intellectual property. Um, if you guys are having any issues, um, seeing me clearly. Um, can you comment below just to let me... Hi, Keiichi. Thank you for joining. Can you see me clearly or is it dark? Because from my end, it looks dark, but um, I'm trying to mount the camera so that you can see me clearly. Can you see me clearly or whoever's on? Yes? No? Okay. Um, so I guess, you know, the first thing I'm going to start, you know, I want this to be very interactive and just very casual. You know, I just want to, you know, share. Um... Oh, thank you. Okay, so you can see me clearly. Thank you. Hi, Bola. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm so excited. You know, this is my first, you know, live show. Thank you um, for loving the lipstick, which I'm going to talk about. Like I was just saying, um, you know, this show is going to be called Lipsticks and Trademarks. And the reason why I call it that is because people always ask me what lipstick I'm wearing every time I do a video related to my law practice and because I love lipstick. So, you know, I figured, you know, I love lipsticks. I love trademarks. So let me talk about two things that I love and, you know, have a very relaxed discussion about how to protect your brand or intellectual property. So the first thing we're going to start with is what lipstick I'm wearing. So I'm wearing a MAC Retro Matte. And it is called Dance With Me. It is my absolute favorite lipstick from MAC. There's no time I wear that people don't stop me asking me. This works at night and it works during the day. You know, depending on what you're wearing, it just, you know, adds and puts it all together. So that out of the way. So what I wanted to talk about today was trademarks versus trade names, what the differences are and you know, which one is better essentially. So a trade name is exactly what it is. It is the name of your company. So some people also refer to it as something called a doing business as. So for instance, I'm here in Florida, you know, and you can register an LLC and you can also register a doing business as, you know, for that LLC. Or if, you know, your business is a sole proprietorship, you can register a doing business as if you don't want to use your name. Whereas a trademark is the process of registering your business um, logo, symbols, slogan, phrases, what else? Um, and, you know, your business name. And what a trademark does is that it gives you federal protection all over the United States. And I'm going to break that down a little bit soon. So with a trade name, what essentially a trade name does for you is that it lets the state in which you register it... Um, Yes, yes, but I'm definitely going to be sharing, you know, in, in the next second why a trademark is important. So with a trade name, what it does is that it just tells, you know, the state of Florida, the state of New York, wherever state you're in, that this person is an actual registered business here in the state or it's a registered DBA doing business as name. Something, you know, finicky that happens here in Florida is that if you register a DBA, and you do not register an LLC or register a corporation, they are not going to stop another business from using your exact name to register an LLC or corporation. So I don't generally recommend it in the state of Florida unless you've registered the LLC or the DBA or you have a federal trademark. So now let's talk about what that protects. That doesn't do much. It doesn't protect anything. You know, you just have your trade name um, and, you know, it only applies to this state. So, you know, you have something we call common law protection, which is when you've not registered a trademark. You know, you can try and, you know, um, 
you know, ask somebody else to stop using the name. But if it's only if it's outside of the state of Florida, you technically cannot if you've not given those people um, federal notice that you have a trademark. So why is trademark important? So trademark not only protects you from a state level, it protects you from the entire United States. So, you know, I have Bella signed in here, one of my absolute faves, you know, let's use her as an example. So one of her brands is called Clever Girl Finance. So even though she's located in New York, New Jersey area, you know, nobody else can use that name in the category she's in and in the industry that she is in, or even any name that is confusingly similar to that name, you know, because it infringes on her mark and causes customer confusion. So what does that mean? You know, if, if you have a, if you don't have a trademark and then different people are using names that are similar to each other, it causes customer confusion. So the customer might not know which one is your product. And so if they end up buying a, you know, inferior product, they may say, oh, I thought I bought it from this person and it wasn't you, but you don't have a trademark protecting you. So you can't stop other people, you know, from doing it. So I'm just going to talk about the disadvantages of a trade name. Um, and then once I finish talking about that and then give you some, you know, pros and cons. So really essentially the only advantage of a trade name is that at least, you know, people within your state know that you're doing business as that name and you can use it for accounting purposes and so that the state knows that you're doing business. But um, one of the disadvantages is that, of course, it doesn't stop somebody else in that state or in any other state for that matter from incorporating that exact same name or that exact same LLC. And it doesn't stop somebody who has the intellectual property, i.e. the tr registered trademark, from asking you to cease and desist using that name because federal protection trumps, you know, your state DBA. Um, so, of course, you don't get that federal protection. And then you can, even though you can technically say, you know, well, I have common law protection, you know, of it as a tr common law trademark, you know, you can't really seek monetary damages, you know, from whoever you feel is infringing on your mark. Um, and if you never protected your mark, if somebody started their, their, let's say somebody registered your trademark and they started after you, you know, I mean, it will be really hard to prove that you've been in business and you didn't protect your mark and this person protected their mark instead of you or that you're not the one infringing. So it's always a good idea to trademark. And then, you know, um, advantages of trademark, of course, are that, you know, you can use the mark federally all over the United States, you know, it protects your mark, you know, wherever you go, whether you're an online, especially if you're an online based business nowadays, you know, so it behooves you, um, if you're an online business to do the, to protect your mark right away. Okay. So Bob asks, how soon should a business file a trademark and how long does the process take? So, you know, my suggestion always is that before you actually go and register your business name or fall in love with like your slogan, you know, all your catchphrases, you always want to do a preliminary search. You know, you can either hire an attorney to do a pre preliminary search for you, or you can try and do it yourself, um, where you search just to make sure, first of all, you know, nobody has that name on the USPTO. And then once you do that, you know, and you register your business, you know, I say you need to apply for your trademark immediately. So there are two ways you can apply for your trademark. You can apply before you register and start the actual business. So even though you've registered a business, you might not have started the business. Or you can do it once you've started using the business. So the way the um, trademark office, you know, determines the date of use is they look at when they started using their business for commerce. So even though, you know, I might have registered my business name in um, Florida, if I haven't, if I don't have a website, if I don't have clients, if I don't have anything, just a name registered, then I haven't started using it in interstate commerce. So if that's the case, but you're afraid that somebody will steal your name because it's catchy, or your slogan, what you want to do then is file an intent to use trademark. So what essentially this does is that it takes you through the whole trademark cycle. And then once you get to the end of the cycle, which is the review stage, when the examiners, you know, ha after they've reviewed it um, and put it up for publication and nobody um, protests the name, they send you something called an NOU, which is a notice of allowance. Um, NOA, I mean. Um, and so the notice basically says, we're going to 
Like, yeah, exactly. Like how celebrities trademark as soon as possible. And speaking of that, I'm going to talk about specifically Blue Ivy because you said that when their kids are born. So exactly. So even though, um, so once Blue Ivy was born, you know, just to segue a little bit, you know, they put in the name to register Blue Ivy. And I don't remember Beyonce's other children's name. I think they also put that in. You know, and I would use her as an example to show why it's really important to trademark your name. So we had um, a lady out in Boston who had a um, wedding events business called Blue Ivy, who already had a registered trademark. And, you know, because, of course, Beyonce is a, you know, larger than life celebrity, she wanted to make sure people weren't profiting off of the name of her children. So she put an intent to use trademark and um, try to basically ask the USPTO to take down the other woman's um, trademark because it would be profiting off of her daughter's name. And the argument was that how many people are thinking that somebody's going to name their child Blue Ivy? I started this business way before this child was conceived. Sorry about that. Um, I started this business way before, you know, um, her child was conceived. So it is my trademark. And so she was able to come to the table and say, Beyonce, if you want this trademark, you have to pay me $10 million. You know, so, uh, so of course, Beyonce rejected it. But the point is, it gave her bargaining power. And that's why I always try to explain to small business owners, it's really not about how small your business is. Your intellectual property for your business is going to be one of, if not the most important value you have in your business, especially as a small business owner because it gives you leverage it gives you bargaining power you know, if somebody comes to you and says you know i'm trying to register this trademark but they said you have a trademark you know you need to you know agree to coexisting then you have leverage to say you know what in order for me to agree to do that you need to pay me x amount of dollars then i'll agree to it because then i know it can cover whatever loss you know i have which is why it's so important that the smaller you are actually the more important it is for you to register your trademark because that is your leverage and your bargaining power over like a larger company that has deeper pockets and you know super large attorneys that can come and try and bully you so i definitely recommend it and so going back to um the timeline it's generally um from start to finish if there are no issues with your trademark it's generally an eight month timeline um that's what it takes but um, the minute you get your um, put in your application, you are issued a serial number. And that serial number stands as proof that you have a trademark pending. And so if somebody is infringing on your mark or attempts to and tries to apply for the mark, their stuff is going to be put on hold until the USPTO decides on your case because you know you were first in time and first in right. So they need to figure out what whether they're approving yours before they tackle on the first person. And so the person cannot say, or they didn't see your name in the USPTO. So your name is active and live and pending the minute you file. And, you know, it goes through the whole process of, you know, being assigned to an examiner within the first three months or four months of the application. And then from the examiner, at that point, the examiner can then decide, oh, you know, I want you to change something, you know, or they could deny you outright because they feel like, you know, it's going to cause confusion with another mark. Um, and then that's now up to your attorney. And you see, I specifically say attorney because, you know, your attorney will be able to draft a persuasive brief using precedent cases for you saying why your mark does not cause confusion. Or this is just one reason they might give to reject it or they may say your mark is descriptive. There are different things, you know, reasons why they can give. So, um you know, once that's done, um, you know, and you're able to survive that, your mark moves on to a publication stage. And publication is where they put it out to the whole world and say, you know, this person wants to register this trademark, you know, speak now and forever hold your peace, you know, basically how a wedding ceremony is conducted. So if, if you don't, you know, refute it right now, after 30 days, you can't. And so after that 30 days, if none of them, um, nobody, you know, protests your mark, the mark is yours and you'll get your certificate in the mail, you know, typically on average between 11 and 12 weeks from the date of publication. So, so that's why, you know, it's really important to know the difference between trade 
trade name. It's great, you know, to have your trade name, but from a protection standpoint, to protect your goodwill, your clientele, and all the marketing that you've been doing, you always want to um, do a federally registered trademarks. And you know, some people ask me about state trademarks. I personally don't reject, don't don't recommend it. 